Good evening, folks. Okay, so you'll notice the ghetto white earphones. Well, they're not ghetto, they're Apple. Um, but yeah, this microphone that I've got here has been playing up. So let's just use this microphone here, which is going to be much better. And then on Wednesday night, we're going to have a brand new cable that fixes this little microphone here. So it's all going to be good. Um, how's everybody been? Um, Miss Gypsy said, thanks for sending the emails. So yeah, for those of you who haven't got a clue what Miss Gypsy's on about, um, I'm sure you probably do because I've been banging on about it for the last week, but I've released a free three-part high-performance science bat positive psychology mindset coaching program online last week. It's only available until Thursday this week, so it's going to be online basically. It will have been online for uh, about 10 days. It gets released twice a year, then it goes away because it's super, super powerful stuff. I don't want it online all year round. I only want the people who are the most committed people um, to watch it and get access to it. Um, it's not for, uh, for lazy people. Um, it's Periscope that's cutting out on the connection. Oh, Periscope's cutting out a bit, is it? Well, Periscope's stable at my end. So if you X out of this and then X back in, well, X out and then just come back in, you hopefully are going to connect to a different server at Periscope and it's going to be a little bit better for you. Um, my uh, my um, connection seems pretty, uh, pretty good. So I've been able to get on for a bit. It says Verona. Good evening, Verona. Not seen you for a while. Yeah. Um, hope everything is uh, everything is good. It's cutting out for me as well. Says Verona. It might be. Uh, it, it looks stable for me. Those on the replay aren't going to be seeing anything but a good quality picture. They're not going to know what this is all about. Um, but talking about those videos, just while people get a better connection. Yeah. If you go to bulletproofactor.com, you can sign up for the free videos now. Video one and two is already out. Video 3 is coming out in the morning at 10 a.m. Now, you're only going to understand Video 3 if you've watched 1 and 2. So try and watch them tonight or try and watch them tomorrow and then watch Video 3 tomorrow night. In Video 3, I share a, a formula that literally guarantees success. And I know that sounds like a massive claim, but this will guarantee success in any area of your life, whether it is your acting career, your physicality, your spirituality, your emotional mastery, your friendships, your relationships everything if you implement this formula into your life it trans transformed my life eight years ago when i learned about it and I, I lay it all out in these three videos that you can get for free um i'll hold you to that um who's saying that who says that halbrad halbred who's that let us know uh, your real name rather than your username um but yeah it honestly serious oh it's phil all right phil um yeah it absolutely will transform your life. Seriously, it really, really will. No bullshit. You must commit to it. You must implement it. You'll understand it. Ultimately, it's science. It can't fail. Um, it isn't a wish for it and it's going to all happen for you. It's a do this plus this plus this equals massive success. And you're going to be able to uh, break, break that down, implement it into your life. And you'll see more success in 2017 than you've ever had in your life if you do that. So go to bulletproofactor.com, get those videos. And then tonight we're looking at, because in those videos I talk about how I spent a decade in a job that I hated, kidding myself is what I should have been doing in order to sustain myself whilst I got an acting career, which it wasn't. I was doing, I was, I had a lot of limiting beliefs about why I needed to stay in that job. I certainly stayed there, <laughs> God, like at least six years too long, guys. Like seriously, if I'd have known that formula, like, God, I don't know, four years into that job, I wouldn't have stayed for those, those, those other six. Um, and a lot of people have been asking me about, well, how do I get out of it? Or how do I at least stay happy in this job? whilst working my way out of it. Because I understand that's what a lot of people have got to do. If you've got people to support, or you've got you know rent to pay, mortgages to pay, I totally get it that you do need to work a job in order to have money and to be able to live. You absolutely do. And I'm certainly not telling anybody, leave your job, just focus on your acting, you know, and everything's gonna be okay. That isn't always gonna work that way for you. What I would say is definitely focus more on your acting than you're probably doing now, working in that job. We're going to look tonight at four ways you can succeed in acting whilst working your day job. Um, and I would say start looking and creating a plan. Look at all these messages going off. It's all Twitter stuff going off. Create a plan that you can work towards that's going to get you out of that job and into a full-time acting career quicker, you know, as quickly as possible. Because really, it's the only thing that's going to make you happy. Whilst you're working a job you don't want to be in, you're effectively uh, giving yourself permission to be miserable. Um, you know, that's what you are doing. So tonight we're looking at four ways to succeed in acting 
whilst working your day job. Before I start, who's got a day job and what are you doing? And let me know on a scale of one to 10, how much you enjoy it. My job was in game, the computer game shop in the Trafford Centre here in Manchester. I've got a coffee tonight. I shouldn't be having a coffee this late. I've got to go to bed at half 10. I'm going to just be wired. Um, but yeah, let me know what your day job is, where you're working it, and um, how fulfilled you are on a scale of one to 10. Me, I'm a plasterer, says Scoobs. Okay, well, I mean, is that so is that actually self-employed then, Scoobs? Do you get to do that yourself on your own terms? Because that's probably actually quite fulfilling in those terms if you don't have a boss and you are your boss. Writing, photography, graphic designer, they all sound like great creative uh, you know, feats there, Miss Gypsy. These seem miles better than working in a computer game shop. Combo of role play and part-time sales, says Phil. So yeah, part-time sales. Um, you know, well, act as a good salesman, ultimately. You know, I, I, as much as I didn't like my job, I was good at it because I could just talk the hind legs off a donkey and convince people to buy computer games. <laughs> I'm doing role play five days a week. It's acting, but uh, miss out on auditions, um, says Verona. Okay, yeah, five days might be a... Um, might be a, a bit much of a commitment if you want to do other stuff uh, and on weekends you film weddings I bet that's an interesting one I bet it's high pressure though Verona filming weddings when you get one shot at a shot you know or you've got to catch her, the groom and the bride as you're walking down the aisle and the speeches and if you screw up then you can't you can't go take cut take two let's do that again everyone first positions please <laughs> like you can in the TV industry. I bet that's pretty tough. Um, definitely. But these sound miles more interesting than uh, my shit old job. Office space, four days a week. Okay, can range from eight to zero, says Helen. Wow, okay. So yeah, you, so you've got like massive peaks and troughs then. One day, this is what most people live in terms of their state of being though, Helen, to be honest. Cloud nine one day you know, suicidal the next. And um, this is what I do in the Bulletproof Actor videos to try and stable and steady out people's state of being so that even on those bad days, you're still at 80% and on your good days, you're at 90, 95. Uh, no cards, it, I like my job, but it meant means to an end. Need, need to be fulfilled personally, says somebody there. Um, yeah, so sometimes, yeah, we absolutely, well, like I say, you know, Steve Jobs says the only way to, uh, you know, you're going to spend a lot of time, you know, in work and the only way to uh, enjoy work is to love what you do. Um, and I understand how for everybody that would probably be being on set full-time acting career every day. Uh, it's not possible really for even, you know, the, the best actors, the top actors, but um, there's definitely things you can do whilst you're in the lesser enjoyable jobs to, um, to have more success and enjoy yourself a little bit more. And I'm going to go through four of the things that I was doing. And I must admit, I was only doing these guys in the last year I was in that job. And I think it's because I was doing these things that I managed to get out of that job within that last year. Um, so uh, these are things that I wish I'd have known earlier. Um, who makes an excuse? And be honest, right? Who's said in the last week or so, oh, I'd love to have done that, but I don't have, I don't have, I don't have enough time. I put a... a a link out in the Facebook group in a minute. If you're not part of the Facebook group and you're an actor, come and join it. Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash act on this TV. I put a link out a minute ago, did a little Facebook Live video going, guys, I'm going to be on Periscope. I'm going to be sharing these tips with you and I'm also going to be talking about the Bulletproof Factor videos. And, um, and a couple of the comments were, oh man, it's Walking Dead at 9 o'clock. And another comment was... Um, on the videos going, oh, are these videos on YouTube? Because, you know, I want to watch them at some point, but I don't have time right now. And I was like, it's absolutely like, just, ugh, I hear it so often. It's, it, it's so ironic that the people who tell me they don't have time are the same people who are telling me that they're going out at the weekend or they go to this bar or they go to that party or they had a Netflix binge and they spent four hours watching House of Cards or whatever it was. And I'm like, man, you know, you you like the idea of having success way more than you actually enjoy having success, clearly, because you just ain't putting the time in. Phil's here going like this. Phil was only joking with the with the Walking Dead thing. Um, but I hear it a lot of people who genuinely mean it. Like we've heard in previous scopes, we all have 24 hours. We absolutely do all have 24 hours. Um, and it's what you do with those 24 hours that sets the winners from the losers. Um, and there are, unfortunately, just to be harsh, a lot of losers. And I don't, I don't mind people who who spend 12 hours a day watching House of Cards or 
Game of Thrones or whatever they're doing, if they're not the ones complaining, if they're happy doing that, they have won already. And they, you know, they, they have beaten me in terms of, you know, they are totally, utterly fulfilled with their life doing that. If that's all they want and that's it, bingo. Don't change a thing if that's what you're happy with and, and you're like, I, I love my life. I love everything about it. I'm totally fulfilled and I'm watching Netflix 12 hours a day. Winner, you know, that is fantastic. However, 99.9% .9 of the cases, these people who are doing these things then tell me they don't have enough time, they don't have enough money, they don't have good enough relationships, they don't have a nice enough house, they can't afford their own house, they can't do this, that, the other, they can't go on holiday, all these things. And I'm like, well, well, something's got to change. So you've got to start committing to some change in order to have more success. So number one, this first thing is based around time and people's perception or, uh, you know, perceptions of lack of time. And that is, I don't know if you can see this on your, on your connections, but one, plan your time when you get home from work. Okay, I see so many people. Well, I'll read it to you. It says, it's easy to get back after a 30 minute commute. My bus ride home was about 30 minutes uh, when I was at game. Uh, you know, put your feet up on the sofa and relax. Okay, well, this isn't the time to start doing that. Okay, you have around about, people normally have about four hours, four precious hours from when they set foot through the door to when they go to bed. And you've got to make those hours count, guys. Okay, at the beginning of the week, what I used to do, is I'd write down how many spare hours I was going to have after work, okay? And then factor on your commute as well, factor on your commute um, from your place of work and time for food because you've got to have food when you get in, totally understand that. And then build a plan for that week, okay? Set goals to those times that you've got, okay? Now your goals, instead of saying something like send my CV to casting directors, which is just a bullshit general statement of just nonsense, Okay, set the following SMART goals. So for those who know what a SMART goal is, it stands for specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-bound. We're gonna go over that on another scope towards the end of the year because I'm big on goal setting for the new year. But set a SMART goal, which would be spend one hour, totally specific, one hour on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday night writing to X, Y, and Z. Cannot advocate this enough, says Fanny, life-changing. Goal setting properly is massively life changing. So you'll be saying, I'm going to spend one hour, very specific. So you, you know, it's, you've got that. Everybody's got that hour. Um, on a Monday, on a Tuesday, and on a Thursday. And not just writing to casting directors. I mean, who the hell is that? We don't know who that is. To X, Y, and Z. Not specifically X, Y, and Z, but you know what I mean. You would find three people and go, I'm going to write to Daniel Edwards, Jill Trevelli, Beverly Keogh. I'm going to spend an hour doing that each night. Monday is going to be Jill, Tuesday will be Daniel, Thursday will be Beverly. That's one hour of quality letter writing, well, email writing this day and age. Um, and you're going to get shit done. You're not going to come home after your day at work that probably, if you're like me, working with the public, you ended up losing faith in humanity because there's so many absolute dickheads who think, who thought that I'd, I'd personally make you know manufactured their xboxes and when one had gone wrong it was absolutely my sole fault my responsibility because i made that xbox on the production line and i made it go faulty idiots coming into my work who would just throw it down on the chair on the table and just go that's fucked um and like what you know if you'd have come in and said oh i'm sorry mate this is this isn't working i'd have helped them so much more amy's here good evening amy amy where are you amy's i saw amy um you're on a train or summer at half past four in the morning going to film a commercial. Are you there now? Or let us know how that went. If you're, uh, if you've already done it. So that's the first one. Yeah, plan your time. Plan your time when you get home. Because if you don't plan your time when you get home, if you work in a job that you don't like and you try to get far in your acting career, the temptation is to put your feet up, lie back, and do things like watch Walking Dead. And all you're doing is you're pissing yourself off because you're watching actors on TV who are having massive success doing what you want to do. And I promise you, those people who are on that TV in Walking Dead that you're watching didn't come home from work, put their feet up, slob out and do fuck all, all night. That's why they are where they are. No, I'm home, says Amy. I was in Leamington Spa in a solar field. Amazing. Well, um, well good on you. Uh, exactly, says Fanny. Um, precisely. So, um, so yeah. Word says Verona in big capitals. So two. We're talking about hours again. This is a little bit more on time. I'm going to expand on point one for point two. 
And this is how, this is why I'll never accept people telling me they don't have enough time. Because I just think, if I think they're lying. I think they either sleep too much or they waste time doing shit that doesn't matter to them. So sometimes you've got to ask yourself this question. What, what is the one thing I can do right now that's going to make everything else easier or unnecessary? So some of the things you probably do in your life are completely unnecessary if you focus on something else. Think of the one thing you could do at any one point that's going to make anything else in your life easier or unnecessary. So point two, we're looking at squeezing extra hours out of the day. Now I might have been a little bit optimistic here because I know people don't get up this early. I've started getting up at six for the last 20 weeks now and it's been quite transformational in my, in my productivity. But I put here, what time does the average worker, if you're doing a day job I'm talking about here, you know, wake up to leave for work? Although Amy did wake up at probably three o'clock in the morning to get to Leamington Spa on the R4 train. She's an actress, not a normal day job though. So let's say 6.45, people get up quarter to seven, say, and they leave maybe an hour later at quarter to eight to beat the rush hour to get to work for nine, okay, if you've got an hour drive to work or whatever. So people get up at 6.45, but what do they do with the hour before they leave for work? They sit on their bloody phone, checking their shit social media accounts, which is what most people do. And what an absolute waste of time. 4.30, said Amy, when she got up. So yeah, this is what most people do. They just get up, and the first thing they do is just check social media, and they probably waste 20, 30, 40 minutes checking Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, watching a few cat videos, whatever it is they do. How much more could you get done if you woke up at 5.45? Now again, that might be a little bit, you know, put this into your own kind of time frame. That might be a bit early for a lot of people. But if you did that and you left at the same time as 7.45 that you'd normally leave, that's two extra hours. You know, two massive extra hours to grind towards success whilst everyone else is sleeping. I love the walk to the gym at 6.45 because I'm like the, presently the only soul in the world on the road. Um, there's a few cars now and again, but I feel like I've got the world to myself because I'm hustling when everybody else is sleeping. Um, you're walking to work way more positive because you go to a job you don't like, but you will have spent two hours doing something you do like. You know, you've already made a, uh, a change in your life uh, that morning. You're moving towards your personal goals aside from your day job and your colleagues, when you get to work, they're also going to be half asleep having just soaked up all that negativity they probably found on social media. So it's like four, five, six kind of positives you get out of just getting up an extra hour earlier and just getting, you know, getting more out of your day. And what I found when I started getting up earlier, because I was a proper night owl, so I would normally go to bed at like two, three in the morning and I'd be getting up at like 10 the following morning, feeling like shit, honestly, just feeling so lethargic. I wouldn't really wake up properly like in myself, so maybe 12, one o'clock when I actually felt human. And then my friend had a baby, second baby, and he's like, mate, I can't work out at five o'clock in the evening. Can we go in the mornings before work? And I was like, well, what time does that mean? He went, we'll have to be there at 6.45. Instant fear just shot over me going, no, I can't do that. I, I'm not a morning person. All these limiting beliefs that even though, you know, I coach people on this stuff and I know about them, I was instantly like full of all these limiting beliefs. I was like, no, you've got to practice what you preach. You know, I know that if I want to be a morning person, I can be a morning person. And it was hard for like the first three weeks, but now it's almost, and again, no bullshit. I'm always quite excited when I go to bed, half past 10, because I'm tired for one. That's why I brought these periscopes forward to 9 p.m., not 10 p.m. like they used to be. And when I get up in the morning, I make it so easy for myself to get up and get out because I plan all of my stuff the night before. So tonight before I go to bed, I will lay my track pants out. In my right pocket, I will have my gym card and my front door key. In my left pocket, I will have my earphones that I've got in now, because I like to listen to a podcast on the way back from the gym. Um, I put my trainers out at the bottom of my bed, a t-shirt um, on top of my track pants, and I put my vitamins, oh, my vitamins go in my right hand pocket as well. So in the morning, I drag my legs out of bed, throw my track pants on, my t-shirt on, and then I literally I grab my socks, go downstairs, and I'm like ready. I make some porridge and then I walk out the door almost bang on every single morning, 6.45, um, 6.40, sorry, out to the end of the road, me and my mate, we're in the gym. Um, and I will have done more work by seven o'clock than I ever used to do. <laughs> Probably when I went to the gym at five o'clock because I used to speak to everyone in there because it's like a youth club. Um, and it's been transformational. I get back, I have a shower, 
and I'm ready to go at my desk at like 9 a.m. And I get more work done now than I've probably ever got done in my life. And I'm not staying up till stupid hours. I got over the limiting beliefs that I would never be a morning person. And that was like, I say, probably like 20 weeks ago. Months and months and months now. I think I've missed one day where I thought I had appendicitis, but I didn't, thank God. Um, but seriously, yeah, getting up early, not only will you get that extra hour out of your day, but you're going to feel really alive and you're going to feel win like you're a winner because everyone else is sleeping whilst you're working. It's a great feeling. So that's point number two, squeeze extra hours out of the day. Don't bullshit me or bullshit yourself that you don't have enough time because even if you're working, you know, nine till six or whatever, just get up an hour earlier, go to bed an hour earlier and get your work done on the thing that you want to succeed in, not putting all of your hours into the thing you don't want to succeed in. Because ultimately, guys, as um, who said it? Uh, Jim Carrey said, ultimately, you can fail at what you don't want to do. So you might as well fail trying to do the thing you do want to do. All right. Point number three. This is great. This like is one of the biggest gifts that I got from that 10 years in that shit hole. Ops, guys, you've fallen over. Wait a minute, you're back. <laughs> it's all right, that's what you get by having earphones in that aren't as long as the usual microphone you use. Hopefully you're all right, you've not banged your heads. Oh, that woke those up who were maybe going under. Um, this is great, guys. This was uh, Butterfingers, says Phil, absolutely. So I did those 10 years at game. And, you know, they weren't a great 10 years. The first four years were actually probably all right. Um, Bill Bradshaw's here. Good evening, Bill. Um, but then, God, man, it got bloody laborious and just boring. And uh, I became quite bitter about the general public, like I mentioned before, because a lot of them were horrible. Bill will get this. Bill's day job is in Tesco. Bill is going to understand this. The general public sometimes can be absolute mentalists. But one thing that I got from game that I would ne I'm so grateful for that I would never have got anywhere else is a shed load of experience with people. And this was really valuable and you need to realize how valuable you spending time with people in any capacity is for your acting career. I want everybody who's doing a job that they might not like, whether it's in a coffee shop, a supermarket, whatever you're doing, uh, you know, scoops when you're plastering, you're gonna come into contact with people. Write down your ideas during the day, the things that you can do in your acting career, right? After I'd worked for an entire decade in retail, okay, I couldn't wait to escape that job for a life as an actor. However, that decade was not wasted time. I learned so much about people in that time, all valuable observation for characterization um, and my own writing. Oh, bugger, I nearly knocked you over again. Bear with me, guys, bear with me. Wait a minute. Oh, you, oh, what have I done here? I want your comments up, but I seem to have that there. There you go. <laughs> All going crazy tonight. Okay, this is where the single most important object of my life came, in, uh, came into play, okay? And that was my notebook. When I was at game, right, I used to write things down on till receipt. Crazy things that had happened throughout the day until I had so much till receipt, I was like, I need a book to keep this in. And I got ended up with three massive notebooks in all the time I was there, all full of the craziest stories and people that I had come across at work. Absolute crazy people. Bill says, true, retail is actually a great way to meet and know people who you wouldn't normally meet. Exactly. Those notebooks formed the foundation for a six part sitcom that I have since written with my brother. It's called Game Boy. I don't think Nintendo are probably gonna let us have the name because of the Nintendo Game Boy, but it's a bloody good sitcom. There you go, Fanny said, didn't you write a sitcom? I absolutely did, Fanny. One of my biggest life goals is to have that sitcom made. Okay, so my advice to everyone is to write everything down. Okay, life is often stranger than fiction. Some of the things that I wrote about and I've put into the sitcom, you would not believe. You'd go, oh my God, he's got the greatest imagination to come up with that story. Where on earth did he get that from? It actually happened. So many of those stories actually happened. They were 100% true. Some of the stuff is just absolutely insane. There was one guy, I'll tell you a funny story. There was one poor guy, some old man who nearly got battered, so we had, that isn't funny in itself. Like how it happened is funny. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like beat up old people. But we had, you know, there's like basically the door from the shop floor to the stock room. 
you know how they're always alarmed generally when you go to stores? You might hear that alarm going off as staff walk in and out of that room. Well, we'd had loads of stuff robbed from work. So we had our biggest member of staff, Rick, who was like a, just a rugby player, a massive guy, he looked like The Rock. We had him dressed in his own clothes, yet he was still working in the store just so that he could kind of be a bit undercover. And it was dead busy one Christmas. Now, the door to our back area had a mirror on the front of it. So it was like mirrored glass. So you couldn't see through the glass at all the stock. Now, it was dead busy, massive queue around the store because it was Christmas. And we'd had these thieves in in the morning because we found all these wrappers at the back of the store that were empty. We're like, right, they're probably going to come back in the afternoon. Be on your lookout. So Rick, thinking he's like He-Man, is like, right, I'm going to get these guys. Now, above the door... This is how old this was, how long ago it was, was when we started games on CDs. It said CD-ROM above the game, CD-ROM, as in read-only memory, CD-ROM, what you would put in your computer back in the day when games came on CDs for your PC. And the alarm started going off. We just said, woo, 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 and it was so busy, you couldn't really see what was going on. Now Rick, like some kind of bull, just ran full pelt through the store. <laughs> slammed open the door crushing whatever was behind the door between the door and literally through a plaster stud wall literally like almost through it the whole thing had cracked i go through and i just hear rick's on the floor this like what could only be like a 70 80 year old man with an impression of this 78 year old man with his walking stick was through the wall (laughs) practically into the stock room (laughs) And what had happened is he'd thought that um, we were going, why were you coming in here, mate? Why were you coming in here? And he was after CDs. He wanted a Max Bygrave CD. He thought the sign above the door said CD room because he was old and he couldn't read very well. Bless him. He didn't have his glasses on. And because the glass was mirrored, it was reflecting all the CDs that were actually behind him into the glass. So he thought he was walking through into the CD room. He was walking through into the stock room. He was getting absolutely battered by by Rick. Get out of here, says Fanny. No, that's absolutely true. So stories like that, that are mental, that you're like, you wouldn't come up with. I had had three massive notebooks full of them because I was working in that environment where mental things happen because where people are, crazy things generally go on. So, um, So yeah, write down excellent you oap bash it wasn't me it was rick thompson holding my hands up wasn't me uh, but yeah stuff like that is amazing so whatever job you're doing write it all down and you know and just observe people because it's really going to help you as an actor you know how people behave and react to stuff this has never happened at my job i am very envious says tony rossi <laughs> i had loads of stuff we had some like some uh, romanian uh guys like gangs like in the traffic center where i worked once two rival gangs and then there was a fight in my store and there was only me and two little girls like working around the till like lauren and um what's the other girl called lauren and uh becky and um they were only like this big so it was up to me then to split this fight up so i had to go up grab this russian guy romanian guy by his arms behind his back i always try to hold him back from the other guy who had just headbutted um, and then I was getting my head back, thinking, please don't headbutt me back. Um, I'm an actor anyway, but the face. Um, so I had to split up a fight. We had another fight once on Valentine's Day. Don't know what that was over. Probably a girl. Um, yeah, proper mental stuff used to go on. People nicking the most ridiculous things. Kids stealing two-pound magazines. And then I'd catch them, and I'd like, Why? If you're going to steal something, you're not trying to steal something good. I've now got to fill in this report for two pounds. Where was Rick the Rock Simpson, for good sake? Rick was not, Rick Thompson, not Simpson. Rick was not there that day. Rick has since gone to work, no joke, for MI5. Not even joking. I had a phone call out of the blue from someone from MI5 saying, Hi, um, your friend Rick has applied for a job. Is it a convenient time to talk or can I come and see you? And they quizzed me for an hour on all kinds of things about this guy's background, um, what his mum and dad did, did he sympathise with I- the IRA or Al Qaeda? <laughs> Loads of stuff like that. Because he was henchman, he was just massive. MI5 wanted him, obviously. Now, don't see the guy. So, point number three, anyway, we digress, was write down uh, your ideas during the day. You're not meant to spill that info, it's fine. No one knows who he is, but I think he weighs very much fight. If I die, right, and I'm kidnapped and I don't do a periscope on Wednesday night, 
you know it's Rick the Rock Thompson who's got me into a load of shit. Right, point number four. This is the final point. And this is really important that I need everybody to realize. And this, I don't care, you know, even if you, you're not doing a day job and, you, and you've made it in whatever field you make. This applies to everybody. Hipsters here. Good evening, hipster. And number four is remember your day job or any job, you know, I should have put any job does not define you. This is what people need to get over, right? In this day and age and, you know, the environment we live in now, okay, people are impressed by the letters after their names or titles on their business cards, all this bullshit. No job title will ever define you, all right? I promise you that. The head of a TV channel may have commissioner on their business card, but it doesn't mean that they're a great leader, you know, it might just be that, you know, that they're great in instilling fear into people, and that's how they've got their way to the top of whatever they're doing. So you have so many talents that cannot be written on a business card. Or you know what, maybe you can. You can start putting these as your title. Go-getter, personal developer, an inspiration, a motivator. You know, these are the real traits that will get you far in life. So stop comparing yourself to others in the industry, all right? No job will ever define you. What you do, you know, to progress and enhance your life and the lives of others is what defines you, not your job. All right. So remember that whatever you're doing, you are not a barista, you are not a shelf stacker, you are not a lollipop lady or whatever you do. All right. You are a human being with a shitload more to offer than just a job title. So I want to end on this. My good friend Thomas Edison, inventor of the light bulb, just says a lot of great things. All right. Opportunity is missed by most people because it is dressed in overalls and looks like work. That's a salient point, very good, says Phil. But yeah, people don't understand, you know, you might be in a coffee shop, or you might be in game, you know, or wherever you are, but there's a lot of opportunity in anything that you are doing. And um, you might, you know, feel that it's work. You might even have to physically put on overalls as a plasterer, Scooby, to go and do your job. Um, and people look at it as work, but if you can start looking at everything you do in your life as opportunity, an opportunity to get further in your life, every part of your life affects every part of your life. If you're getting better at plastering, you're becoming a better actor because what if you have to go on a show where you've got to be a plasterer, <laughs> all right? Um, you know, opportunity is everywhere, ultimately. Um, so don't feel that you know, you're pigeonholed because of a job title or something you're doing. Um, and I know some of the most interesting people I know now are in their 60s, are just about to retire and are just about to completely change their job. They're going to retire from their job they've done all their life and they're going to go and study or do something else because they're savvy and they realize they might have another 35 years on the clock. So they want to experience something else. And this is why, like, I don't know, I... I said this before, you know, the acting industry will never be enough for me if that's all I could do for the rest of my life is, is that one job. I need to do so many more things. And they're generally related to media, but creation, creating things. I want to experience a lot of different things in life. Um, so right now, you know, if you are having to do a job that isn't just your acting career and that's what you really want to do, still try and look for the opportunity in it and appreciate the fact that you're having an experience that will later or one day feed into your acting career because you're going to be a you know, more rounded individual because of that. Getting lots of mentions this evening. Respect. Yeah, you are, Scoobs. I'm giving you loads of mentions. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it's just poignant. I think it's just true, you know, that people do get so hung up in this industry. Time's running out. Oh my God, I should be so much further than I am at the moment. I'm still working in this shop or I'm still having to do this or that and the other. Harrison Ford was a carpenter till he was like 35 or something like that. Um, you know, some of the um, the greatest actors in Hollywood didn't get, you know, their breaks until later in life. And if you've watched the Bulletproof Actor series, you'll hear of those in video too. Um, I, uh, I mentioned people like Morgan Freeman. Um, who else? Yeah, Harrison Ford. Um, and even when you're older, you know, there's so many, there's shitloads of amazing parts. Look at people like Helen Mirren, you know, Michael Caine, Dame Maggie Smith, all in their like 70s and 80s, constantly working. Um, so you've got lots of time to get experience under your belt doing those shitty jobs that will ultimately help you in your acting career as well. And, and you know what? I think everyone should do a shit job. You know, the fastest way to discover what it is you really want to do is by doing something you really don't want to do as your day job. Ford turned to carpentry away from acting and it's skill he maintained. 
Harrison Ford, still a carpenter. He might be at a knock up a table just like that. Uh, but yeah, the fastest way to find out what you do want to do in life is to do a day job you don't want to do in life. You'll learn a lot about yourself. Everybody should uh, should do that. His carpentry got him his job on Star Wars. See what I mean? Scooby, get yourself plastering on Star Wars on set. Got a job there, mate. Um, definitely. But just think of those those points. We'll just do a little recap from four to one. Things to remember to get you through your day job so you can still have success in acting. Remember, your day job does not define you. All right? Point number three, write down ideas during the day. All those genius ideas, particularly for comedy, if you want to write a comedy. You know, they're set. The situation comedies are set in situations that are everyday things like shops, coffee bars, all kinds of things. Write down ideas. You'll find some great ones. Um, point number two was squeeze extra hours out of the day. Get up an hour earlier. Always role playing with the lads. Half the time they don't know who they're working with, says Scooby. Ha! They just think they're working with some schizophrenic plasterer. Um, so, yeah, squeeze extra hours out of your day. Don't bullshit me that you don't have enough time in the day. Get up an extra hour earlier. You know, even if you're going to eat three days a week, it's three quality hours a week. And then, number one, play your time. Um, plan your time. Play your time. Plan your time when you get home. So if you don't do this, the likelihood is you're going to get home, you're going to feel tired, you're going to put your feet up and you're going to watch TV all night. If you schedule through smart goals, just one hour, two hours a night to do a very specific task that you've already scheduled and set for yourself as a goal, you're going to get it done. If you don't get scheduled, you won't get it done. I promise you, put it in your diary, put it in your calendar, it will get done. If you don't, you're going to forget or you're not going to be bothered. Simple as that. It's very easy to opt out of that if you don't plan it. Um, so they are my four points. Well, there's four things that I did when I was working that hellhole job at game. And if I'd have, I only did those in like the, the ninth year. If I'd have done those in like year four, I probably could have got out way earlier. But maybe I needed to go through all that shit in order to realise that it wasn't what I wanted to do in my life. <laughs> Although I think I knew that probably after about three weeks. Um, but I hope you found that useful, guys. And um, let me know. Let me know what you're going to do this week then. We've got one at the start of a week. Let me know which one of those points. Choose one of them if you want. You don't have to do them all. Which one are you going to do? Are you going to plan more time? Are you going to get up an extra hour earlier? Are you going to start writing down ideas at work? Or are you going to remind yourself that your day job does not define you and you're going to look for opportunity in your day job um, that can enhance your uh, your career or just opportunity in, in, in life in general? Let me know which, uh, which thing you're going to do. Or maybe you will do them all. Um, and then I can hold you accountable on Wednesday when we do the book club. I still don't have a book for book club on Wednesday, guys. I need to choose that tonight or tomorrow. Get it ordered for Wednesday. If you've got any suggestions for a great book that will be useful to actors or personal development, let me know. Uh, remind myself, my, my day job does not define me. Exactly, Tony. Exactly. I feel you've chosen the easiest one of the four there. <laughs> also, I would do that and then I would also... Um, Tony, what, what is it you... Let us know what your day job is. I can't remember what you just said. Is it role play or what, what is it you were doing? Because um, I bet there's uh, there's loads of uh, funny things. Loads of funny things in, in that there Chicago that you're at. Um, cheers, Ross. Valuable information. Plan, 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 says Helen. Excellent. Honestly, like, I'm going to do, do a lot of stuff towards the end of this year on goal setting with you guys. So powerful. The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. Can't recommend this book enough for being happier. The Big Leap. Right, okay. I'm going to uh, I'm going to look that up then. The Big Leap. I'm going to Google it now whilst other people are telling me what they're going to do this week. The Big Leap book. Here it is. It's on Amazon.co.uk, Tony Rossi. Nine pounds and 99 pence, I think. I like the picture on the front. It's a goldfish jumping out of one small bowl up into a bigger one. Um, great role model for true success. He enjoys abundance and a deep connection with his own spiritual essence and at the same time has lived for three decades in a thriving marriage. Now he shows us how to do it ourselves. I'd like to live in a thriving marriage. Um, yeah, basically. God, yeah, I'm 34. I need to find a wife soon. Crikey. Um, but yeah, well, maybe we'll do that book, The Big Leap. Thanks for the suggestion. If you've got any other suggestions, put them in the Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash act on this TV. I'm going to attempt one day of getting up an hour earlier, says Fanny. Yes. 
Fanny, seriously, I shied away from it for about 11 years until just this year. It's been the most transformational thing, apart from goal setting, I think, that I've probably ever, that I've ever done. It's so empowering to get up. You know what? It feels great to go to bed at the end of the day with nothing in the tank. When you go, you know what? I could not have been more productive today if I wanted to be. And that stems from getting up early. It absolutely does. I believe you, says Fanny. Seriously, it's like, if I was writing a book, it'd be chapter number one. Like it is in most books, actually, on personal development. I just use a skip chapter one and move on to chapter two because I'm like, nah, not going to be a morning person. That's not for me. Don't want to do that. I, I'm a night owl. I mean, it sounds cooler, doesn't it? Oh yeah, I'm a night owl. It just sounds cooler. I think that's maybe why I just bought into it. It's bullshit. Get up in the morning, <laughs> get up early, work out, you just feel great. Do it, Fanny, says Tony. It might take a couple of days to get used to, um, but it will change your life. I would say the first couple of days, actually, are probably... Uh, well, the first day is horrible. first couple of days after that are quite exciting because you're on something new. The first week after that is horrible. Be aware of that and then preempt it by, like I say, making everything easy for you when you get up. Lay all your clothes out. Lay your workout stuff out if you're going to work out. You know, make it very easy so you put... You know, it's the path of least resistance. We've done periscopes on the path of least resistance. The path of least resistance for many people is to do fuck all. However, that's no way to achieve anything. But you can make success easier by making that the path of least resistance. Remember we spoke about the guy who wanted to learn the guitar, the 22nd principle? where he, would, he had to get his guitar out of the cupboard. It was 20 seconds away. Didn't want to do it. Remember when he put it in the middle of the floor so he had to pass it every single day as he left the room. He picked it up every single day for 21 days. Boom, that's a 21-day challenge. The 20-second principle. Bring whatever it is you want to do 20 seconds closer to you and your chance of doing it increases exponentially by like 70% or something insane like that. So implement that into your life. That's powerful. Um, but awesome guys and thank you I want to say thanks for tipping up on this scope tonight because it's Halloween and Walking Dead was on at 9 o'clock thank you for choosing to do this more than that uh, that shows you bet on yourself and you don't leave it to chance I do that with my weights put them in the middle of the living room says Fanny yeah then you're going to do them because they are there um, absolutely uh, well I'll leave you guys to um, go and uh, put what we talked about tonight into practice get to bed early so you can get up early Fanny um, and I'll be back on Wednesday, potentially, with Tony's book, The Big Leap. I'm going to have a little look more at that, Tony. I might order it right this second, get it on Amazon Prime, and I'll have it delivered by Wednesday morning. Um, I love Amazon Prime. So good, isn't it? Next day delivery. Boom, just like that. Uh, so that's good. Yeah, I'll get that done, and uh, I'll see you 9 p.m. Wednesday. If you haven't got those videos from Bulletproof Actor yet, get them, because they are coming down in three days' time. They will go away into the vault and will not be released again until well into 2017. The comments I have had from over 500 people now who have watched them have been insane. I'll just read you, for the benefit of those who haven't heard any of these comments, just a couple that have been left today. Um, absolutely brilliant, Ross, again. Um, and using the table and leg scenario is excellent. You won't get that until you watch the video. Makes so much sense. Easy to understand how ridiculous those limiting beliefs are and how easy it is to eradicate them. I'm looking forward to the next instalment as I'm enjoying this immensely. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Dawn, hi Ross, another amazing video, just can't get enough. This is what I've been waiting for my life, all my life, she says. Um, there's just been like, so, I mean, look guys, this isn't this is me making them up. There's like, like oh, I can't angle it properly so you can see. It just looks like it's a big white splodge for you. Oh, about there, what if I do? You can kind of see, can't you? You can see the little things there. Why can't the camera pick that up? Oh, there you go, at that angle you can just about see it. Look at all these comments. I mean, literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments that people have left on these videos. They are absolutely transforming people's lives. There's video one and video two. Video three is out tomorrow at 10 a.m. Video four is coming out on Thursday with a very special announcement. You're, gonna wanna, you're not going to want to miss it. You're going to want to watch that. Um, so get it, bulletproofactor.com. Get those videos, transform your life. And I'll see you Wednesday night, 9 p.m. UK time. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm going to have a microphone fixed for Wednesday as well, so we won't be on uh, Apple earbuds. Um, and I won't, keep, <laughs> I won't keep toppling the iPad over. Take care, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night or your day if you're in America. And I'll catch you with you soon. Bye for now.